Okay. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, I'm, my name is Lisa Piccarazzi. I am the Secretary of the Board of Finance. I'm acting as chairman tonight, although our chairman, Steve Harney, has called in and is on the speakerphone. So our first order of business is delegations. Are there any folks from the public that would like to speak this evening? Please state your name and address for the record. Bedraggled, wet, and cold. <laughs> Luane Lang, 160 Pennsylvania Avenue, Niantic. Um, when I spoke about the budget for the Samuel Smith House a week ago, I said that most historic properties were purchased by a town for their own agenda, such as the 300 acres for the Smith Harris House. And then I got thinking about something that I had left out. We need to revisit this because actually the Samuel Smith House did was purchased for that reason. It arrived on the scene because of its location on the watershed that feeds the aquifer that provides the water we drink. Its existence came about because of the report of the Natural Resources Commission that identified 65 properties of value to the East Lyme water supply. Letters were sent to the owners, signed by the Natural Resources and Planning Commissions, and the first selectmen, seeking first refusal if their property was to become available. The Hubers, the owners of the Samuel Smith House, replied, and so the process began. Our Historic Properties Commission was contacted and we became part of the information loop. When the open space types of funding became unavailable, the Historic Preservation Funding was explored by the National Resources Chair, and thus that option was pursued. For those used to accessing open space and having the responsibility of managing land, the historic building and its preservation has been a growing experience. Open space gets purchased, and usually a passionate group manages it and then it plans its future use. A historic property is a different kind of investment. I'm going to share with you a comprehensive list of the activities from 2009 to 2012. It was developed as part of the materials submitted to the successful purchase of the application, and the town received $151,000 for the price, purchase price. Um, and I'm also going to give you... We need to acknowledge the people who visited and worked and voted at the public hearing to pursue this house as one essence of our town's past, and it represented a variety of residents and taxpayers. We also need to acknowledge that funding for preservation has not been what might be anticipated for other types of land and even local recreation. We also need to acknowledge how very special the core group of people were, and who they still are, who have accomplished so much with their organizational knowledge, passion, vision, and muscles. We need to acknowledge that a certain level of preservation is necessary by passion and by the Legal Preservation Easement Agreement. Recognition that there is a willing body of volunteers with a record of accomplishment, it's time to say this is where we're at and what are the best options we can pursue. What best plan can be developed together? Who will sit down <coughs> together and develop a balanced, consistent, historic preservation plan for this treasure and the land, and the land that protects our water supply? So looking at the proposed budgets that the Samuel Smith Group presented to the Board of Selectmen, it would seem wise to provide funding that would enable the construction of a public restroom facility that meets the code. This would be a materials and contractual cost of five to $6,000, and much labor would be provided by the volunteers of the Friends of Samuel Smith. And these that I gave you are, uh, are actually left over from the fundraising dinner that was done by the three houses in town, and the address for the Samuel Smith Group has been changed. What was interesting is that the little poem that's here actually is taken from the song about preserving the White House, but it, it was very appropriate for what was done for the, that night for the three houses. Thank you. Thank you. Other folks wishing to speak tonight? Hi. Hi. Mark Christensen, uh, Vice President, Friends of Samuel Smith. My address is 66 Grassy Hill, East Lyme. Uh, so after... Uh, Last Monday's meeting, I was reminded of the routine by Abbott and Costello, who's on first, 
uh, what's on second, I don't know, is on third. And so uh, Luann just did a pretty good job of outlining some things and um, sequence of events that occurred during, uh, for the purchase of the Samuel Smith property, and you have that in front of you. And as she stated, and I will reiterate, that purchase was begun not by the Historic Properties Commission, but it was begun by the Conservation of Natural Resources Commission because it fit into the open space plan, which was adopted by the Planning Commission and uh, accepted as part of the POCD uh, back in 2009-2010. Uh, we seem to be still talking about the past. Uh, we need to move on to the future. The, the, the past was is clearly written there, and uh, it had more, more, um, more than you were aware of, I think. Um, we've tried to put together this synopsis and bring you up to the future, and we were asked, we, the Friends of Samuel Smith, were asked last fall to put together a one and a three year budget, which we did. And it was, it was expected by us that the Friends would have a meeting with either the Board of Selectmen and, or the Board of Finance before budget season reached its end, but that just didn't happen. Um, we did what we were asked, though. Uh, the uh, monies that were spent by the Samuel Smith, <coughs> Friends of Samuel Smith, included hiring a grant writer uh, in 2012, uh, paying a CPA for incorporation to become a 501c3, reinstalling a security system, some tree removal, um, state and federal taxes, and burying the power cables. Um, it also included electrical bills, installation of a sign, and some fire extinguishers. Through 2014, these expenses amounted to $3,975. Uh, uh, through the, uh, let's see, through the end of 2015, uh, we have spent $6,257. That was for the, through the entire property purchase. So that's how much has been spent on, we'll call it maintenance. Um, the Friends, more importantly, the Friends uh, have logged volunteer hours in 2013, 1,908 hours, in 2014, 3,302 hours, and estimate, estimated for 2015, we don't have our numbers in yet, uh, are somewhere around 5,000. Which puts the, by the state of Connecticut dollar cost count uh, at twenty-three dollars and seven cents per hour. Uh, we have put in about two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars, according to the state of Connecticut, in work hours. This is hours donated. So um, when you say we're, we need to do more, we're we're doing a lot. I was actually amazed by this number myself. Um, we were all amazed at this number. As of this date, uh, April 4th, uh, $2,700 from the town of East Lyme and a $1,000 grant for the gutters has not been spent just because of the, uh, the winter months and the inclement weather. Work will begin uh, again on, on, uh, on those work items. Uh, the Ragdowski outreach workers have spent four days in March clearing brush, removing the final oil tanks from the basement. Uh, Guy's Oil removed the tanks and paid for the oil that was left over in the tank. Uh, the Friends have removed the inside paneling uh, to the foundation uh, so that the foundation inside paneling to the southeast corner uh, and doing work so that the foundation may be rebuilt. This work is being done pro bono by a licensed mason. So again, we're reaching out and getting something uh, donated. All this does not include the roughly $10,000 that the Rotary has put into the, to the site, mostly in the community garden and irrigation system, uh, which has produced over 300 pounds of vegetables for the soup kitchen. And that was just our first year. We got a late start by the time everything was squared away. It was the 1st of July, I'll say. And even with this late start, we were able to donate 300 pounds of vegetable to the soup kitchen. So that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, the garden was built by the Friends but paid for by the Rotary. Um, and it's ready to go this year when the snow melts. Maybe. <laughs> uh, residents have donated period furniture to the house as well as ironware and pots and pans for the kitchen. There have been three soup and cider fundraisers uh, 
as well as the cooperative one with the Sportsman's Club. That was at the very beginning of the uh, inception of the Friends. Um, the Samuel Smith House participated in uh, Open Farm Day twice, uh, bringing animals to the site to kind of recreate what the farm might have been. Donations were received on those days. Uh, the House has participated in three State of Connecticut uh, open houses during June. We're currently working to raise money uh, for an East Lyme bike tour scheduled for October 1st. Uh, the name is uh, historic pla uh, Open Spaces and Historic Places Bike Ride. And that actually, uh, give proper credit, that was Selectman Nickerson who uh, came up with that brilliant idea. Um, and he has also been quite generous on his uh, personal donations. Uh, the town is another matter. Uh, we hope in the future that you'll come to the house and uh, see all the work that has been done and what is yet to be accomplished. We believe that we've accomplished a lot with what the town has asked of us. We believe we are not a loose group of volunteers who have no official capacity and no lease. Um, we, we don't have an official lease, but we need one. And uh, let's see, what was the final thing? We're, we're considering um, a dance uh, hosted by all, uh, again, Mr. Nickerson's idea, uh, but it's a good one. A dance to raise money uh, later this summer. Uh, we haven't come up with anything final yet, but uh, possibly somewhere in late August uh, to, to raise some money, and we appreciate that assistance uh, as well. But nevertheless, uh, this is a town property. Um, the town did donate money to the Friends of Osogachi Hills when, when they did work over there. And um, we're looking for, for some help from the town here in this venue as well. It is the town's property. All right, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Other folks wishing to speak this evening? Hello. Name and address for the record, please. Alex Argeris, 17 South Beachwood Road. I'm writing to you as an alarmed East Lyme taxpayer as well as a concerned parent of one current and one future elementary school student. As you are already aware, on March 28, 2016, the Board of Education voted to approve the total conceptual cost estimate of $45 million, $60,609, to renovate as new Lily B. Haynes School um, with up to $1.5 million for Flanders School. This decision came as quite a surprise to the many parents who attended the meeting and vocally opposed this proposal as well as an under, its underlying justification. At some point in the future, the Board of Finance will be asked to vote on the same proposal, and I courte courteously ask that you take the following information into consideration before doing so. Number one, the proposal is being rushed by the Board of Education. On 322, Jeffrey Newton held a meeting with the parents of children that attend Niantic Center School. During the meeting, Mr. Newton described the new el elementary school's proposal and allowed the parents to ask questions. Many of the questions asked were either partially answered or not answered at all. Mr. Newton was receptive but did not offer us any guidance other than to voice our opinions at the next Board of Finance meeting. A week later, at the Board of Education meeting, many parents pleaded with the Board of Education to pump the brakes by holding off the vote and allowing us to work with them to understand how they arrived at the new proposal and to take our feedback and incorporate it to make us more comfortable before moving forward with a plan that truly garners majority support in the community. As we all know, they voted the new proposal through. However, during the Board of Finance meeting on March 30th, Mark Nickerson said that the proposal wouldn't be presented to the Board of Finance until May or even June. Based on that, I don't see any reason why the Board of Education made the decision to vote so hastily on March 28th. Number two, this is a proposal without a plan. What the Board of Education voted through on March 28th is a proposal, not a plan. I, as well as many of the parents of this community, have questions about th this proposal. Will the children of Niantic Center School be re relocated to Lily B. Haynes? Why does the Board of Education seem open to keeping Niantic Center School operational as long as there are other state-funded programs that are interested in leasing it. Will any children be placed in portable classrooms at Lily B. Haynes? How will the health and safety of the children be protected at a school that is under construction? Will there be enough parking at Lily B. Haynes? And how will recess time be managed for such a large student body with limited outdoor play space? 
These are just a few of the questions that I've heard asked, and to date no real answers have been provided. I understand that your remit as the Board of Finance is to make sure that the town can afford its expenditures. But for an expenditure with a price tag this high, I think it is of paramount importance that the finer details be worked out before progressing it forward. There are many members of the community that have basic issues with this proposal and question the accuracy of statements made and information shared by the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. If you deem that this town can afford the $45 million price tag, you may find that you've approved a proposal that doesn't meet the needs of the community and therefore ends up being a waste of money. The proposal is based on misinformation, point number three. Slide 13 of the PowerPoint presentation handed out at the Board of Education meeting on March 28th says that the property of LBH cannot be sold. This is a key <laughs> argument for the sudden switch from the original two school proposal to the current one school proposal. Based on information that has come to light, this argument is unfounded. During the Board of Finance meeting on March 30th, someone from the public stood up in front of the Board of Finance and Mark Nickerson and stated that the full minutes of the 1955 town meeting in question show no stipulation that the entire LBH, the Libby Haynes property, be used for educational purposes. After this person finished speaking, Mark Nickerson requested to see this documentation and the two individuals went out in the hallway for a discussion. Has Mr. Nickerson truly never seen the document before? If he has, then I'm disturbed that he is allowing the Board of Education to publish false or inaccurate information in their latest elementary school's presentation, a presentation that I'm sure he must have seen and reviewed before. Number four, the proposal is not best for the educational needs of our children. During the East Lyme Elementary School's Design Steering Committee meeting on March 9th, the meeting minutes state that the recommended restructured proposal is based on what the town can afford and not what is best educationally for students. I would question how do they know what the town can afford if they haven't yet put the proposal forth to you for your commentary and voting. The Board of Education is supposed to define and execute the educational vision for the town and its students. Unless the vision of the Board of Education is to do what is not in the best educational interest of the students, this statement, as well as the fact that the proposal was voted through by the Board of Education, defy logic. Would you approve a major expenditure from any other town board, commission, or department if it didn't align with their purpose? If the Chief of Police asked you for a few million dollars to purchase a fleet of new vehicles, but finished his proposal by telling you the expenditure won't make the community any safer than it already is, would you approve the funds? So the next step for this proposal is to go to the Board of Selectmen, and I'm assuming the outcome of that will be the same as it was <coughs> for the Board of Education. As a result, I'm asking you to consider my arguments for a different outcome. This is an important topic in the East Lyme community, and any decision will have long-lasting ramifications. Based on the information I have shared, as well as all the information that will be shared by others, Please do what the Board of Education has not done and what I'm assuming the Board of Selectmen will not do. I'm asking you to vote down this proposal so that the process can be reinitiated in a manner that is responsible, transparent, and engaging to all members of the community that wish to be involved. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Yes, Karen. Hi. Karen Rack, 27 Black Point Road. I feel for these parents because obviously it hasn't been a transparent um, process. So what I would suggest, and I hope everyone's listening, is that I, I would ass assume that this would be on a capital improvement plan or a five-year capital plan. So all of you show up in May when that vote is at our town meeting, and you vote it down. Pack the place. Vote it down. Vote down the entire capital improvement plan. And there you go if you don't get any transparency moving forward. Um, and I, that's all I have to say about that because I really don't know too much about the plan. Um, as far as the, the Smith House being now part of the, on the taxpayer's dole, uh, I went to a lot of those meetings. I don't believe it should be. And actually, I think Mr. Christensen gave us some really great information as to they're doing quite well. They're doing wonderful with all their fundraising and all their volunteer hours, and I think that's the way it should continue. Um, there's wants and there's needs. And as we've gone through years and years in this town, these things that are great to haves have now become embedded 
like bundled into our entire budget. So now we, we, we need to untease it. We need to, you know, it's like getting that bundle package from Frontier and you've got everything bundled together. That's what we have here in town. We have, you know, everyone's entertainment now is considered a necessity. You know, we pay to have our, our, our populace entertained through recreation and, and uh, you know, sports and so forth. And it just it's, it gets bigger and larger and larger and larger. So I, I don't think they need help. I think he, he demonstrated through all his facts that they're doing quite well. And um, they've had some very generous help. And I would say continue to do that. It seems like they're actually doing a lot better than a lot of other, other places. So, and as far as the budget in general, because that's what you're deliber deliberating on, uh, the Board of Finance really doesn't deliberate on plans. So you guys just are, are deal with the bottom figure. You don't, you don't tell us uh, you know, how much the real mill rate's going to be until after the budget is passed. So I would suggest that we actually have no increase. It hasn't happened for as long as I've been coming to these meetings. And it's time. It's time for the taxpayer. Um, every day more and more news comes out that shows that, you know, it is becoming difficult for the average family to absorb these costs that are happening in their lives. And taxes, you know, the taxes here, the taxes at the state level, federal taxes. And like I had said before, you pay more in taxes than you do with your food, clothing, and shelter combined. When that happens, you've met a tipping point, and it's too much. We have a, a, a U6, which is our broader unemployment, uh, at 9.7% in February, and it rose up to 10% in March. These are realities. Um, we have, uh, as far as uh, according to Challenger Gray and Christmas, the job cut announcements by major firms were up by 32% during the first quarter of 2016 compared to the first quarter of 2015. These are the largest firms in the U.S. Re retirement, people aren't able to retire. They can't afford to. We have a large portion of individuals in this town that are in retirement. Some of them are having to go out to get a job in order to meet their tax obligations here in this town. Um, just astounding today was that our manufacturing recession has deepened and our factory orders dropped to a five-year low, the lowest they've been in 60 years, 60 years. The lowest they've been now is the last time we saw that was when we were during the middle of a, of a depression, not a recession. Um, I'd just like you to look at it also in Connecticut, we had a rise in our weekly unemployment claims in February and a decline in the weekly um, income for people in January and February. So um, not that you get to pick and choose what to, um, you know, fund. However, um, there's a lot of things that are, that are not necessary. They're absolutely, positively not needs. They don't have anything to do with our safety. And I, you know, look at those numbers, what they chalk up to be, and, and you could have a, a, a decent budget and, and, and give a little bit of money back into the uh, families and the individuals' pockets, and I suggest you do that. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Other folks wishing to address the board? Yes, ma'am. Name and address for the record, please. Um, it's Ashley Manwaring at Black 23 Black Point Road. Um, I'm actually reading a letter from my mother-in-law tonight who couldn't make it. I respectfully request my letter to be read into the minutes of tonight's meetings. My name is Amy Manwaring, and I am a lifelong resident of East Lyme. I am also a co-owner co of two local businesses. Nyanic Plumbing and Appliance, and also Nyanic Lawn and Caretaking Service, both of which have been in operation since 1952 and 1946. As a business owner, I am keenly aware that it is necessary to make decisions that will have an impact on the success of the company. I am also aware that at times it becomes necessary to revisit that decision and adjust it, maybe even abandon it in order to go back and get it exactly right. So I'm asking this of you to rethink the decisions to shut down Nyanic Center School, to band-aid Lily B. Haynes, and to postpone any work on Flanders for another five to seven years. 
The land where Nyanick Center School stands is valuable, that goes without saying. It is a jewel, our jewel. It stands at the Four Corners Gateway, at the Four Corners Gateway to our village. In its own way, it is a symbol of the American dream. Immigrants, including my late grandfather, John Cotillo, attended school here, broke the language barrier here, made their living here, and wove their story into the fabric of our town. Their spirit, as well as the thousands that followed, are captured there. So yes, the point is made. The property is valuable. No, it's priceless. It's not just a building. It's more than that. It's the cornerstone of this village community and should be preserved. Take more time, whatever it takes. Involve the school, school communities, the neighborhood, and business communities. Yes, that means more discussion. Give Nyanick Center School the respect it has earned and deserves. Take your time for the sake of all of our schools. Thank you. Amy Manwaring. Thank you. Other folks wishing to address the board? Going twice. Anyone else wish to address the board? Okay, I'll close delegations. Thank you. I, yeah, I'm going to read that. Thank you for your help. You can keep helping me. No, that's good. I received a letter from Jennifer Murray, and it, she asks that this be read into the minutes this evening. Um, dear members of the board, I respectfully request that my letter be read into the minutes of tonight's meeting. I wanted to come to tonight's meeting, but it is again scheduled at the same time as the Board of Education meeting. Please stop scheduling these meetings when residents have to choose which to attend. I would like to inquire about two things on the capital plan. Under Department 999, there are two expenditures for central office, an ADA-compliant ramp costing $100,000 and new windows costing $90,000. Since central office is in, is in such an outdated building, perhaps it should be relocated inside Lily B. Haynes. This allows space to be used and money to be saved should the steering plan for the elementary schools not pass referendum. I'm also concerned about the 2017-18 Roxbury Road Park expenditure in the amount of $5 million in Department 421. Our residents are being told that the superintendent would like to close an elementary school for lack of funding. How will we afford such extravagant parks if we cannot afford to educate our children? Regards, Jennifer Murphy, dated April 4th, 2016. It's not on here, but I know she's a, oh, I'm sorry, it is 7 Tabernacle Avenue, my mistake, Niantic. And uh, one of our Board of Finance members is not in attendance this evening, who has also submitted a letter and asked me to read this. Dear Chairwoman, due to some extenuating circumstances, I am unable to attend the Board of Finance meeting being held on April 4th, 2016. The deliberation process is extremely important to me, which also goes along with the importance of the financial well-being of the town of East Lyme and to not overburden the taxpayers. As discussed on several occasions, the local and state economy has faced and continues to face very difficult times. With more financial uncertainty on the horizon, along with slow growth and stagnant salaries in private industry. A key note is that inflation has been near stagnant for the past few years. This is a concern to me as we look into our future as a town. Considering we have a town that has a larger aging demographic group on fixed incomes. However, this being true, East Lyme has always been known for and proud of our school system. This is one of the reasons I live here and the main reason people choose East Lyme over other towns. We need to keep our education system strong. As I look at the budget, from my perspective, it is not to look at it and each individual line from a micro perspective, but more from a macro view. Our first selectman has a relationship with town employees. Therefore, I believe he should make some of these decisions more from a daily operational perspective. A few areas in the budget that are of concern to me in some or all departments are the raising, raises in salaries, overtime, equipment purchases, insurance expense, and lack of purchasing bid protocol. This is from Jason Pizzaglia. And he has some recommendations for uh, budget numbers, and I will deal with those when we 
we'll go through our budget deliberations. So our next item on the agenda is old business. I don't know if there's any outstanding information that any of you would like to bring to our attention. We opened up, uh, well, we accepted bids today on the fire department uh, study, consolidation, et cetera. We'll have an announcement at your next meeting Excellent. on that. We got three bids in. Great. Um, and they were um, competitive bids. So uh, we'll, we'll get that information. So we'll be able to move forward once we get past this budget season on that. Um, I don't know if there's any, anything else that's uh, old and outstanding that we're working on. We'll... We'll get it, get to it again past the past the budget season. There'll be other things to discuss. Okay. So, Anne, I do know there was one item we talked about on the um, vehicle acquisition plan, the interest rates over on the right that we received from Mr. Burgaw, and I think you were going to poke at that and just the the the, the rate of the financing was done at um, two point four nine percent. Okay. When he did that worksheet, he was just doing the total cost that you you pay over the life of of the debt okay i was thinking there had to be something going on with that okay great thanks so we will now move into budget deliberations and the way i would like to do this i'm going to ask each board member after uh, they've reviewed the budget so i'm going to ask them for their remarks and what their proposal is uh, on the budget and then after we all of us discuss our views oh good call then um, I will ask for um, a motion to be made so Beth let's start with you okay first uh, do we have the capital long-term plan yet we don't have the CIP you have your capital budget which is anything that affects the actual budget the CIP has again not been accepted yet by the Board of Selectmen Okay. Generally is but that's going to tell me what the how much is going to be bonded, or what the plan is for bonding that. Th yeah, this but coming it won't, anything year. bonded wouldn't affect this year's coming budget because it'd be short-term interest and all that. Um, am I right on that, Anna? So uh, the Do actual we? capital plan and that. The no, I, I have that in there, but I, I wanted to know how much was. I like the color graph. Yeah. We used to get it. Yeah. you're going to get it. Brown, green, it just hasn't been accepted brown yet. bond. You know what yeah, comes out of, of one pot, and I believe we vote on it. You, you will. said last time we didn't. You will. Okay, so we're waiting for the board of selectmen to vote on that. Yes. So that they haven't seen it yet. And we're coming back next week, and they're meeting this week. Okay. All right. Well, this is what I was thinking in terms of the town budget. Um, in terms of numbers, I was thinking fifty thousand reduction in the CIP CNRE accounts. A twenty thousand reduction in the health insurance benefit of the thirty-hour building official. You said that the benefits. I'm only going by the assumption that was given to me that health benefits were twenty thousand, um, or the benefit package. And if I'm wrong, whatever that amount is. Oh, twenty. Okay, so we we had the part-time official at thirty hours. So I'm asking that he be reduced by two hours. And I'm asking that, if I recall, the tax aid uh, was already at 30 and 37. Uh, there was a, a need for uh, two hours per week, or there was probably more, but two hours per week. I'm asking for an increase on one of the tax aids lines. 